That polarization was notably apparent in the days following the Justice Department's harsh report on the Ferguson Police Department. Civil rights proponents and progressives embraced it for the most part, many saying anything less than the complete dismantling of the Ferguson Police Department would not be enough. While those who tend to side with law enforcement in these matters, including many conservatives, accuse the Justice Department report of being predictably biased against the police. But our next guest, writing on the conservative blog Red State, makes the case that conservatives should care very much about many of the findings in that Justice Department report. Joining me now, Leon Wolf, contributing editor at redstate.com, author of the piece. Um, many conservatives are blowing up the Ferguson DOJ report. Uh, Leon, it's a really fantastic piece. It's something I've been banging on about, so um, thank you for writing it. Um, what, what's your basic case here? Well, I, I think that uh, a lot of people on both sides of the ideological spectrum are really kind of missing the boat when it comes to Fort Ferguson, and it's unfortunate in the way that it's shaping our national dialogue. As I'm sure you're aware, Chris, there were actually two Department of Justice reports issued uh, concerning Ferguson. The first one dealt with the actual shooting of Michael Brown, yep. and the second one dealt with the Ferguson PD at large. Um, liberals, uh, for the most part, I think, are ignoring the first of those, which tends to kind of decimate the hands up, don't shoot narrative, while conservatives have in large part ignored the second part of that, which shows that notwithstanding what you feel about what happened to Michael Brown, there were some serious problems with the Ferguson PD that ought to be addressed. Yeah, let me talk about that, that in quick succession. Um, so, so the first report on the, on the shooting, right, finds essentially there's no cause for federal civil rights charges. And there's sort of two standards there. One is that they don't have, they can't make a federal civil rights case, which is actually a harder case than just, say, uh, a, you know, manslaughter case in the actual jurisdiction. Essentially, um, reiterate some of the things that McCullough found about the credibility of various witnesses vis a vis hands up, vis a vis the encounter that happens, and the physical ballistic evidence, whether it corroborates some of those witnesses versus others. In terms of the Ferguson part of that, um, and I, you're right that it basically, I think, backs up largely the determination of the grand jury and, and Bob McCullough. In terms of the Ferguson part of it, what about it do you think is something that sort of conservatives should be especially attentive to? Well, I think that conservatives, as much as liberals, or, or even more so in many cases, are attuned to civil rights issues. Uh, they feel very strongly about them, and they oppose violations of civil rights by the police. I think where the disconnect comes in a lot of times is that conservatives are less likely to believe that they occur or that they are as widespread as they might be. And so what I think it's important for people to focus on is that what this report shows is that in Ferguson, and I don't think that Ferguson is especially unique in this regard, no. is that these uh, civil rights violations are relatively commonplace. They come from uh, essentially a top-down pressure in many municipalities. It comes from city hall comes from city managers that basically exerts pressure on police to write more tickets for the purpose of bolstering the city's this, revenues. This is, why, this is why I was expecting sort of widespread conservative outrage at the report, because in some ways it's the worst vision of big bad government. I mean, here you have like, you have essentially are turning armed agents of the state into revenue collectors, first and foremost. Like, this whole thing is about extracting money from people for the public till, which when I think about like, when we talk about taxes as confiscation or all these other things, that just seems like a nightmare scenario. It absolutely is, and not only in this case, but also if you look at the Eric Garner case. I mean, look at uh, the offense that brought him to the attention of the police, you know, selling Lucy's on the street. It's, right. it's absurd. I mean, uh, you know, people focus on the police, and I think that there are issues with the police that need to be addressed, but also we need to address these municipal ordinances the increasing reach of the state. And one of the things that I covered in my post that was most infuriating to me is the facial overbreadth of a lot of these statutes that allows the police, in many cases, uh, to stop people for no other reason than committing what you could call contempt of cop. That's, that's a really, really good point. Leon Wolf, uh, thank you, and thank you for writing it, and thank you for appearing. really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, Chris.